Okay. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah? Okay, perfect. Yeah, welcome everybody. So let's start with the afternoon sessions. Um, yeah, I'm, my talk is about uh, running backups with Ceph to Ceph. And um, I'm working for the, the B1 systems located in Germany, around 100, 120 people. And um, yeah, my part is more or less the cloud computing stuff, so all the open stack and Ceph installations and workshops and all the stuff. And um, while I'm talking to customers, um, the idea came for this talk because in every workshop I did, there, there's one minute where you can hear that the needle is falling down on the floor and nobody says everything. And that's when we become to backup, backups for Ceph and with Ceph. And um, yeah, so I think all of who runs the Ceph cluster? Really? Come on. There must be, must be more hands. Okay, yeah, that's, that sounds, looks better. So, yeah, in every workshop I hear descendants, we want to back up our self cluster. So, there are two sides of the group. The one side says, why? We are building our self cluster so that it can, one host can die and we all can access our data. And the other side says, oh no, we need a backup. Why? So, um, the goal is to, to find a way to, to back up some data or all the data of a Ceph cluster. The other ways, or the other problem is um, that sometimes I have installations with OpenStack and sometimes, of course, I have installations without OpenStack. That's a pure Ceph cluster running CephFS or just an export over S3 or something like that. Um, so we have to find a way that also OpenStack is happy with our backup solution. Of course, Asynchronous, Abidimero, provides that the functionality. Um, sometimes it's an off-site backup. I mean, in Germany we have the, the bureau, I don't know, I don't know in the English name, uh, what is, is Bundesamt für Sicherheitstechnik in der Informations, uh, Sicherheit für in der Informationstechnik. So if someone knows the, the, the English words, fine. Otherwise it's just the bureau of, that says the distance between two data centers should be at least 200 kilometers. So the first recommendation years, years ago was three or four, I think, and now they updated the recommendation and says at least 200. Oh, okay. And yet last but not least, I think it's clear what I mean, but just to make sure everybody knows what I mean with the file browser. So who wants a file browser for backups? No, no one? There was only one small hand? No one? Okay, that's good. So it's, but my customers always want a file browser. I don't know why, but hey. Okay. Um, so Ceph provides some solutions or some options to, to run a backup. The first two, I think it's pretty clear. It's the app mirror, so we can replicate an image or a pool to, to an offsite to another Ceph cluster. The other side is, or the other thing is, you can run an S3 multi-site or an older documentation federation configuration and you have a replica of your data. Um, then, of course, you can write your own scripts um, with the RBD backup, RBD import, export diff and all the stuff. Um, and there are some tools. I'm, I only mentioned two, but I'm pretty sure that GitHub provides a lot of more scripts and tools that provide the same functionality. But for my case, it's only these two, or only the first one, Becky2. So someone is using that tool? So I see some shaking heads, but okay. Um, yeah, so, but for all of these tools, possibilities, we have challenges challenges that we have to solve before we can start. And sometimes, if I start a discussion with a customer, after one day, they are saying, okay, maybe we don't want to back up our Ceph cluster because it's too much that we need. We need a second Ceph cluster on all the stuff. So, the first challenges are, is the crash consistency, disaster recovery, bandwidth and costs. So these four points are the challenges that we have to solve. So the first one is, 
of course, we only have access to the base layer. So we don't know the workload of the VMs, of the S3 or whatever it is. So we only know there's disk image, an LBD image, and that's it. And we have to make sure that the disk image is replicated from ROM cluster to another one without knowing what's inside. Is it the VM, is it the database, is it the SAP system, I don't know. Um, with snapshots, we're getting corrupt file systems. Maybe. It's, but it, it happened really often. So um, Maybe also we lost some transactions, depending on the workload. Of course, there are some tools, some hooks in QEMU for OpenStack, where you can say, freeze the file system we, we call, before we do the snapshot. Who runs the hooks in OpenStack? No one? Okay, that's, that's new. So normally you have the option that you can configure scripts that runs just before you're doing the snapshot or over the dashboard from OpenStack, you have the option to say, let's create a backup, let's create a snapshot. And seconds before, you can instruct the agent inside the guest to hold the file system, to freeze the file system, and then you can do the snapshot on the, on the, on the storage. So it prevents curb file systems, sometimes not. So lost, trans lost transactions, depending on the workload. If there's a database, who cares? I don't know. But for this also, maybe the hooks work. If you write a hook that says to MySQL database, dump all the data, do a flash or whatever it is, and then do the snapshot. Um, disaster recovery, it's, it's also a point how you can access the data. Of course, RBD minus C for the cluster name, and that's it. It's fine. You can access the data. What's with your customers? What's with your applications? So OpenStack, for example, has the feed since uh, Queens, the, the option that you can configure a second Ceph cluster as a replication cluster. So that's one option. What with the rest? S3, depending on the client. Normally with F3, you have the problem, you have to reconfigure the, the, the backup zone from, let's say, from a read-only to a master zone, that, it is a, this, that this zone accepts reads and writes. Um, what was the bandwidth? Is there enough bandwidth? Um, yeah, as I already said, can the, um, can the storage can the application handle a switch over to a second storage? So for example, OpenStack, yes, it can. Um, and bandwidth itself, so I mean, not the bandwidth, not one gigabit link or so, so I mean the bandwidth compared to your backup volume. So easy question, can we backup 20 terabyte in 24 hours over an 800 megabyte line? Who's for no, who's for yes? Yes? Oh. Yes, only one hand. What's with the rest? No? Who's for no? Ah, okay. So, yeah, of course not. 20 terabytes. If you really want to transfer 20 terabyte over an 800 megabit line, it takes two hours, two, two days, and seven hours or so. And with the bandwidth, it also comes to network latency. For disaster recovery and backup, it's normally not the problem. But if you want to access the data instantly or from, from your primary site, you want to access instantly the data on the remote side, that is a problem, of course. Yeah, and costs. So, second self cluster. If I start the discussion about the first one, the customer freaks out sometimes. Because if you really want a self cluster, you cannot use the laptops. You need hardware, NVMEs, drives, depending on the workload. So then comes the point backup. That's no problem. We need a second one. So that's it. All the discussion is stopped. I'm going home. Of course, you can configure your second Ceph cluster with slower disk, um, cheaper disk, slower network, and all the stuff. But in the end, it costs money. It costs money to the customer. And one problem that is also the uplink. So 
who runs a second data center, I mean, really a second data center, which, which is two or five kilometers away. Okay, this network, 100 gigabit, 10 gigabit, 100, 10, 10. Okay, so that's, that's good. Um, so you, you can run the backup without problems. But what if a customer runs the Ceph cluster and the second Ceph cluster runs three or 400 kilometers away and he only have this 800, this 800 megabit line? Is he able to do the backup depending on the workload? Of course, the initial backup takes a huge amount of time and then only the deltas. So, um, what is possible and what can we do now with Ceph? Um, as I already said, Ceph provides two, let's say, built-in features to do that. The first one is, of course, the ABD mirror. ABD mirror, who knows the ABD mirror? Oh, come on. Okay, so then there are two ways to replicate images data. The first one is you can configure the replication between two pools. Or one, one pool is replicated to another one on the second side. So the second option is you only configure the replication for one image. One image is replicated to one pool on the other side. That's it. It's available since June, so it's a few days ago. It works asynchronous and you need a second daemon. So if you run the config management, it's no problem, enable it, deploy, and that's it. But it's still no file browser available. You only have RBD LS, and, but that's no file browser. Um, so what, what, what is needed for, for the RBD mirror? You have to enable a feature. So sounds easy, right? But what if your current workload is based on RBD that are, that are mapped to the kernel or over the KRBD module to mount the file system on that? Did you know the message, feature is not support, supported, disable that, and all these long parameters? Yeah, so you know what I mean. It's sometimes it's hard to, trick, to, to, to enable the feature. And with journaling, you also include the exclusive log. Um, yeah, by default, there's a default 30 seconds trigger. So that means every 30 seconds, the deltas are synced. But that's all not the problem. The problem is to understand that you're running two Ceph clusters, both with the same name. Who has changed the Ceph cluster default name from Ceph to a specific name? Uh, two, uh, only three hands, three or four hands, yeah. So you know what I mean. It's, it's, it is possible, of course. But the problem is to, to write the documentation and get rid of all these names, linkings, and all the stuff, it's easier to, to rename the Ceph cluster. Otherwise, you have names like ceph.client.remote.keyring. So both clusters have the same name, but different content. So normally, in a good world, in a perfect world, we would have the remote, that's the first one, and the local cluster, that's the second one, with the user RBD mirror. So. problems with our RBD mirror. Problem is, both demons need a connection to both clusters. So the local one needs a connection to the local one and to the remote one. And the remote one needs a connection to his remote cluster, the name, and to the local one. So in that fact, we can not provide any, or not use to public networks, because it's not allowed, it's not possible. The only way to do it is to run both clusters in the same network, or you have some routing kung fu to do, or the network guys have that to do. Yeah, and as I already said, the KABD module is a problem. If the journaling, or if, if you're mapping images from a pool to the host, you cannot enable, normally you cannot enable the journaling feature. So that's, that's the RBD mirror. Multi-site, S3 multi-site, simple storage service, more or less 100, let's say 90% compatible to Amazon's um, API. Um, it also includes the Swift API, 
or some parts of that. It's Keystone competence. You can integrate all your Keystone users into no other. You can integrate Keystone to authenticate your users over the S3 through the Keystone backend. Um, encryption, nothing new. And I don't mean the SS, uh, connection over HTTPS. I mean server-side encryption. But there's still no file browser. So, and I mean Chrome, Firefox, that, that are not file browser. So, first choice we need to do is if we want to set up a read write cluster or replication, so that means you can write deltas on both sides or just the read only replication. With a read only replication, you have the problem and then outpage it, you have to reconfigure the read only side to an active one and redirect all the traffic from the clients to the active to the new active one. Um, start, uh, starting with Mimic, I think. Um, they introduced uh, the cloud plugins, the sync modules, and one of these are the, the cloud sync modules where you can replicate the data to, to an Amazon service. Um, it's also possible to run an NFS export over Ganesha, and you need an S3 client, self-written backup software, or whatever it is. And the browser is still no client. But here's the same, or more or less the same problem than the Airbnb demo. Per default, if you start, you don't get rid of, or you want to get rid of the names. You just want to use the data and provide the S3 server without thinking about the names. So, it's no problem until you want to replicate the data. Then you have the same problem. We have zones with the name default minus default. It's replicated with default and default. Which zone, which side is the master one? Which side is stick to Barcelona? Or which side is to stick to Munich, for example? So if you want to start, try to find the name schemata that you can use. For example, Germany minus Frankfurt minus Munich or so, and that's it. Um, Problem or not, you only need one connection between both clusters. So normally over HTTPS, and that's with an endpoint, and that's it. All the data is gone over this one connection, and that's it. Um, of course, we have third-party tools that I also mentioned. You can write your scripts, um, or you can use Becky 2 for example. With self-written scripts, um, yeah, the the idea is you create a snapshot, and after the snapshot you can create, or you export the difference from one snapshot to another one, to the remote side, and that's it. But in the end, someone has to track your backups. Someone had to track the, back, the, the snapshots of the, of the cluster. And that's where Becky2 came in. It has an internal database. It can handle all the snapshots. It can backup directly to, um, to an S3 storage. You can run backup with files and with ABD. So it means you can you have the, the option to, to run your backups from an RBD or a file to an S3 storage or a CFFS, for example. Um, it's a bit tricky with Kubernetes because Kubernetes, if you, if you, if you uh, create a persistent volume on, open, uh, on Kubernetes, um, Becky2 creates the snapshots. And if you try to delete the, the snapshots uh, in Kubernetes, you get, you get an error message that says, oh, there's still a snapshot, I can't delete the, the RBD. So it's stuck. Kubernetes is, is good, but if you, uh, there are some problems with that. Um, right now, it's only available for Debian, but uh, it's Python, so no problem. And it supports the, the net um, block device mount. So it's an option maybe to integrate some, some cool tools, fancy tools to, to run a file browser plugin over that. Um, yeah, with the third party tools, there are also some problems, as I already mentioned. Active old snapshots, someone has to track that one. Um, Kubernetes has, uh, and Ceph, it's a good combination, but with Backing, for example, you have the problems with the snapshots. And yeah, 
in the end, there's no file browser available for the user. So each time you run the backup, you get a ticket, phone call, whatever it is. Can you restore my whole instance? Um, I add the workflow, for example, it's you create the initial snapshot, then you copy this first snapshot to the remote site, and after hours, days, weeks, whatever you want, you create the second snapshot and only transfer the delta from snapshot one to snapshot two. So this one takes, depending on how much deltas you have, seconds, hours, depends. And then you can, of course, delete the old one, or for example, we track or we keep the latest two snapshots of a backup and delete all the other snapshots. Um, so what we can't we do? With the RBD export, it's only, so we use the, the initial RBD export, just, just the export, for one time things. If we want to migrate the cluster from storage from the old cluster to a new one, that's perfect. It's an untuned, virtualized Ceph cluster, and it takes 20 minutes for 20 gigabytes. So it's not really fast, but it, it will work. On the other hand, the export diff, same image, but with snapshots, drop down to eight minutes. So, but if, if that is really faster, depends on how much delta you have. But the, the good thing is you can schedule that. For example, the RBD mirror runs in the background. So every time the customer writes data, after 30 seconds, it starts synchronizing. That's good for disaster recovery and all the stuff. But for a backup, not really. You want to schedule something. You want to schedule your backup jobs. So that's, the, that's my problem with the RBD mirror. If the customer deletes a file or de crashes the instance, 30 seconds later, it gets all the changes to the remote side, and also the image is destroyed or deleted or whatever it is. And it's, that, that works really good, the synchronization. So you only have a time frame of what? 30 seconds to get a call and to restore the data from the remote side. Afterwards, it's gone. Um, problem is, as you can see, the, the speed it is one peak, I don't know why, but maybe the initial creation or so, and then afterwards it takes 30 minutes for also 20 gigabyte. And there are two options to tune up the thing, but same image, five minutes, but the problem is it consumes memory. The idea from the Airbnb mirror is to run it as a background and it tries to, to consume as low as can memory for the system. With these two parameters, you can configure the, the prefetch, so the amount of how many data is synchronized over one, in, in, in one chunk, in one journal entry. I think the default are 8K and one megabyte or so, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, okay, the S3, for the S3, you need a capable client. So, what is it? S3, CMD, CyberDuck for Macs, and Windows clients, and that's it. But the good thing is you only have one connection, and you only can provide an HTTPS service for the users to back up something. And it scales really, really good. So I'm, I'm really, really fast, unfortunately, but it's no, no problem right now. Um, yeah, what can we do now after all the challenges, after all the problems and all the stuff? We are still using the snapshot feature as the main component to, to run backups with Ceph. And that's only because we want to schedule something and we want to have the ability to restore data from the last six hours. So if we get a ticket from a customer who says, oh, my, my instance are deleted, my instance are crashed, can you restore the instance? Yeah, no problem, here you are. Um, the other thing that, that works really good for us is the S3 multi-site replication. For example, we run this setup with a Becky 2 client and it replicates all the data that comes in from Becky 2 to the remote site and that's it. But in the end, it's also RBD snapshots. Um, yeah, and the RBD mirror, last but not least, it's built-in feature. 
can back up um, all the, the images on whole pool, but in the end, is that really a backup? I think no, because if you delete something, it is instantly, or after 30 seconds, it is deleted to on the remote side of also. Mm. So what's with the CephFS right now? Airsync. There's no plan A or plan B to run a replication from for CephFS. Um, as we heard around in the morning, there is a plan to to set up a replica or a mirror for CephFS, but right now there's no option to to run an integrated replication for CephFS. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm done. So thank you. So are the questions. So unfortunately, I think we don't have a microphone. So if there's a question, no questions. Okay. Um, yeah, the question is, um, are we running into problems with too many snapshots? Um, is, yeah, it is. We're running into problems. But I cannot say how, there was too many of them, so yeah, but we run, that's why we only keep the two latest snapshots of a backup. So, any other questions? Um, can you, um, yeah, depending on your script, uh, the, the question is, can you have different numbers of snapshots on the sites? Yes, you can. If you have your own, if, you, if you're using your own scripts, of course you can. With the RBD mirror, no, that's replicated that, as it is. Mm. How we manage the date, the the S3 and RBD metadata, right? Um, so, in the end, we have no problem with that. So, right now, there, there was no case I can remember where we have problems with that. So we just run it out of the box with the snapshots or the RBD mirror. So, is that what you want? <laughs> it depends. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, then, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, what are the most? This, this, able, yeah, this, this, able, no. mm. yep. <laughs> That's a good, um, the question was, uh, what, is the, what is the feature that I cannot re recommend to, to, to the end user? That uh, what we like to see? Ah, yeah. oh, sorry. I could... Ah, okay. Um, the question is, what, what we like to see in, in the back? <laughs> I, I'm pretty okay with that, what we have, but I think the most of the customers want file browser, something like that, but it, it's not a problem of Ceph. That's the problem of the backup strategy that customer runs. So um, I, I'm pretty good with that, what we have, so no, nothing. Okay, anything else? Any questions? Okay, then thank you.